get a car nowadays in Kenya. So I think it's a very positive development, and I would like to see those cars uh, come to Kenya. I think it would be a good thing for us. I think I should also point out that the Tata Nano is not the only story in town in India as far as India and auto manufacturing goes. We've also had another very celebrated car, which is the Riva car. Now, you won't find it on India streets, but you'll find it in Europe, you'll find it in London, because this is a hybrid car. It's a low emissions car. It's produced through Indian technology, Indian brains, Indian manufacturing, but unfortunately, it hasn't broken the price that. <laughs> But the reason everyone's talking about the Tata Nano is because of its price tag, isn't it? It's making it available to a whole raft of people who normally wouldn't be able to afford a car. Absolutely, and the company has done that in a very, very self-conscious way. They've gone to the market for the people who would have bought the motorcycle, a two-wheeler. Now, families on two-wheelers is a recipe for disaster, and we've got one of the worst road traffic um, rates in the world in India. So from that point of view, yes, it's good if you're moving people from an unsafe mode of transportation, lots of people on a motorcycle, to a safe option, which is this car. But it's not a solution if, the, if you know, if millions and millions of people go and purchase this car when actually the reality in India is diminishing, reducing road space. James, you're in Nairobi. You said you would love to get your hands on this car. Those of you living in Africa, I've been to a fair few African cities, and certainly traffic, well, it doesn't tend to move that quickly. So do you think if everyone went out and bought cars like this, it would help your situation? And even if you don't care about that, would you like to buy this car? Do text us now. Get your mobile phones out. It's country code 4... Our roads are already choked with worthless Korean cars, but Ivy in Nairobi says, how can you call a tiny car which will be used by four people a disaster? An SUV which normally carries a maximum of two people in the developed world is a disaster, big time. Janet Larson from the Earth Policy Institute, this is an issue which is being raised again and again by people on email saying, what? Why should we worry about the environmental impact of this small car with a small engine when people in the developed world are driving around with cars of engines six, seven times the size? Well, there's certainly no question that SUVs driven by one person by themselves are a disaster for the United States and for the world in terms of climate. There's no question about that, but giving every single person who can drive